I think we've had it down to about seven now. Yeah, we got it six again tonight. Right, people, evening to you all. Thanks for uh, tuning in. If I can ask you all to mute. Uh, right, first photo. This is from uh, last week. We're talking uh, Canterbury. Um, before we talk, I met up with the, the chap who organised it. And he says, I'll buy a, a pub lunch before the, the talk starts. So he bought the grub, I had to buy the beers, or uh, Boston. That was a, a Japanese curry, first one I've had. Excellent. They asked me the name on it. The cock up I meant going down there, I had a travel lodge instead of, of a premier inn. And the travel lodge is just a, a, a room and a continental breakfast. As soon as I see it, I thought, crap. Only Peter because it was the nearest venue. Next time, you know, really bad mistakes because they got no bar, obviously. I had to go off license and get me two bottles of uh, golf. I'll take me old nuts and shed us down. So that was me breakfast in the morning. <coughs> I weren't really looking forward to it, but it went down all right because I hadn't had cornflakes for me. So that was a nice treat. Plus the pre uh, orange juice and the flapjack and that sticky bun, whatever it was. I ate them in the mouth to come in on. But uh, it's all a learning curve, eh? But uh, sorry, no, no, again. Right, still collecting me bits and pieces, taking a ruching for the walk. Nettles and the comfrey, just chopping them up. Mixing everything, chopping. Bit of carbon, bits of everything else. Kitchen scraps as well now, there's only me and the missus. No, I just chop these up with scissors as well. Right, if you remember last week or week or so, I was starting off me uh, carrots, I was a bit late, me um, carrots for our show. And uh, just in case I sold some extras in a, got me a nice long. This is from a florist. Uh, florist. I think they use these for the for the the gladys they have, the long buckets. But that was that was going to be binned, and I had a couple of them. I knew they'd come in for some. Cover the hole up, and this is a uh, <coughs> clover, multi-purpose compost. All the lumps are taken out, as you can see there. And this is being mixed with silver sand. Meaning, I'll get me level of what I want. And then I'll just mix that up in an empty compost bag. Before, when I used to do um, exhibition stump carrots, moons again, I used to use Levitons F2S which was expensive but it was perfect for growing carrots to grow medium and this is very similar to it just small multi-purpose compost with a sand in it and a bit of feed feed i saw bung in later on there's a bit of feed in the compost anyway just put it, just put it in there mick for the last two years last two years i've used worm compost and sand for, for seedlings so this germination is fantastic uh, yeah you like to put a couple of photos together and you work compost yeah and now you brew it good man uh the sand originally it was for drainage but uh that, that's me too filled so all the lumps just go on the raised bed. All, all, all I need is three uh, dollops where I'm going to bung them. So it's three seeds per station. These are Nance 2. Usually go from Wilco, but the only Nance 2 they got with Johnson's. Give them a good waiting and then they're 
greenhouse. This is taking the end up, up the old mill part. I mentioned they had the canners in last year. There's the canners still. Well, top's dead, but they're still all in. And all I'm doing is having a quick nose once a week. Is it any new growth? It's got to be a weekend, me and Russian. Loves a grub. Right, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, either last week or the week before, about porridge. Um, I don't know, it's been one of my ingredients for me composting for years ago. And then um, John Murphy did me a piece that somebody sprinkling, like this photo is here, sprinkling porridge as a top dressing around plants. And then I found something else even further. If you, you grind uh, three tablespoons of oat flakes, which is porridge, that's what the Americans call it, oat flakes, and uh, then added one litre of water. <coughs> Once again, I would uh, use, when I do this, probably next week, or I should use rain water. The obtained liquid is then filtered and mixed with water one to one. Feed seedlings with this for stronger roots thick stems and lots of yield. So that was a carry on. It's particularly rich in uh, phosphorus, which is important for root development. So that's another little uh, one for us. Right, my first uh, can of seed that come through. Lucifer is doing well now. And that's what the chap hopefully will look like when he gets a bit older. Right, for me to break in this skin or score in the can of seed skin because it's got a hard skin on it. I'm going to break down that hard skin. I started looking at these on eBay. That and I thought that worked. That's a bit cheap. And that looked good. Oh, it's, oh, it's not clear. I was looking at all these little bits of chaps. There's, uh, there's a few people in the States using the... Uh, uh, Save using the foil basically. So I sent for that chap. Wait for him to come. This is a, another photo I've borrowed um, and I've put it on my talk, raised beds and no deep. Because uh, this this is like raised beds with no sides. Meaning you've still got your beds here. Right, you can reach the middle from this side and that side and again there. But uh, once this, say that bed becomes empty, you can lift that and this and just add mixture of leaf mold, compost, whatever, just to raise it up and then put the board back down. <coughs> so you can still have raised beds without using any sides. They do this in Africa or loads of places. Uh, you ain't got to use a scaffolding board, you can use wood chip, anything like that. They felt of a shark stepping on a Lego brick. Posted. Cathy <laughs> uh, put this on last, well, I meant to put it on last week, probably two weeks old now. So I borrowed it off her. And uh, I've seen these somewhere. 10 quid a plant. So you get your tomato and your taters out the bottom. I said, I'll be doing for 10 quid. Vic, you can graft them quite easily. Ah. Uh, onto, onto, onto a potato. Just graft the top of the tomato, as long as the stem's the same. Yeah. You, no problem. That's it, then. What well, a decent show again this year. Some people do at the show. I outruled them. But, uh that's what I've got to beat. Because I moved from me allotment to back garden, I ain't got much last year. I still got a load in. Right, them I've got two decent gladys and only one half out that middle one. So he let me down a bit. He was a nice single. Onions were too bad. Fruit because I've got no fruit whatsoever. But I was still going to put fruit in, obviously. Because you've got to put a dish of fruit in. 
for uh, this year. I want the chucker. Wrote a couple of good compares from uh, one of my talks. Moves Mall, first met him down at uh, Holborn for about 20 years ago. But he, he was a good lad. He talked here on a lot of some of the rag wars. And then on the good uh, first time I met Matthew Biggs. Briggs, this was this was down um Cardiff Spring Show and that was on. So that's gotta be 12, 14 years ago. Because that show's finished now and all. But a uh, good lad he was. And he's uh Bimmy Compare as well, BBC Gods were alive. But uh, he's a good lad. Stuck up like a few on him. Running out of my own mic. Uh Obviously, buy it bulk from Symbio, and we needed some for the sheds as well. So, th this is just preparing it. This is not why we doing it in the house. The city smells, it does smell that bad. So, I'll wait till it goes out as an end and it's not going to jump it. It's been about an hour, then all my bags are ready. Put them back in the garage. This is little, but uh, the compost multi-purpose compost and bag of ripped out so i thought let's have a close-up of the old compost have a look at the growing medium you see the crapness in it it's just just looks like wood chip and bits of cheese as well any road up propagate is still in use i've now took the lid off which we'll uh, come on to a bit later on but every morning, obviously, I'm going to check everything. Yeah, if you remember, I started my carrot seed off because I was behind. Give me a helping hand. Instead of sowing straight outside, I want them quicker. So I sowed them in the this of a Mickey light. I've got a good eye side here to see them that come through. Here's a side view. I'm just making them out. Perfect. Now I'm ready to transplant. That saved me a couple of weeks. That's the two weeks I was behind. So hopefully with these as well, the little greenhouses to look after them, I can catch up. So these three are similar, same height, level. Now all I'm doing, I've done this with the upper school with the kids. These ain't got too high, meaning the root ain't gonna go too long. But you still get right down the bottom with a fork to get the lot out. Looking at the the pots the cells, all I want is three stations. So I put my little uh, clutches over the top just to make an indent where I want the carrots to be. So that gives me a, a position for the carrots. I then take them off. So the centre of them three. That's where I'm going to do. So there's a first one come out. And the root is just showing there. So I ain't chopped no root up, so I'll go on. Let me all bung him in. The cocoa body in there, I missed the, I picked out the vermiculite as well. Show you that again. So there's one in there, one chap in there, one in there. And uh, luckily for me, all the seeds came as well. There was a few spares. Side view again, you can see them there. Give him a good waitering, then put my little lids on. Because we're still getting a push down to six again tonight. He's just looking after the chaps. Then I earth up round the, the pots of cells. Give him a good waitering. Just in case we get a bit of wind and you don't blow them tops off. So that's just helping them down to base down as well. Perfect. All done, all working. When it's uh, nice and sunny, like it has been the last couple of days, these are taken off during the day. Make out the bottoms out of them big black pots. Yeah. So I've got the depth. depth. So so the, the stump carrots obviously put about the, and then I, I want a, a tap root on them. The longer the tap root, the better. Bullshit for the judges. 
So I've got a couple of seeds left in there. <coughs> so I'm putting them back in the greenhouse just for now. That's looking from the pathway uh, into the tunnel to Rushen, you can one of me uh, nuggets of rabbit muck. Well, that postman delivered me a. Uh, there's that crap on the bottom. So these I've got to score. Now, when I saw these, I thought these were a protection just to put on the end to protect some of it. But I was going through this lot, just trying them all out. As you can see, I've scored in there. All you got to do is get down to a bit of white, but not take any white off if that makes sense. Because once that gets wet on it, it will go through. So I tried him, and I tried another one. See the white bit there? Perfect. Put the best one out of the lot. Which is common sense. It's this one. It's just like sandpaper. So, it weren't a protective for the, the, the instruments I had. It was just to put over the top of these to give it another and perfect. Half the time it's done. Brilliant. So, them spare speed, uh, seeds, there was another thing from the National Can uh, Canna Society in Canada, and they was trialing. Somebody had scored them all, and then just tried it in the moist vermiculite. Obviously, got drainage underneath, so I've tried that as well. Bug them in. These are all from seed I've made from Canada. Give them a good soaking, and then drain through, and then just bug them in the propagator. So, still trolling with them. Uh, the rose, just get, I'm still spraying now. I've nearly got rid of all the green fly. Because we've got SAS green fly in them. Main eggs at night, they're moving up in the morning, so I've got to keep on top of them. I'm very close. As you can see, he's nice and clean. Still miss spraying me a uh, lemon in the greenhouse as well. In fact, I've just done it as, as a, just before I come up here because the sun's off the greenhouse. It was behind a really great tree, top of the road, which is good in the sense that I can uh, spray. Spare sweet peas, these are a late sowing. This is just uh, another trial to see if I can get away with it. Uh, if I can get away with this year, then I know I can uh, sell later. Just saving on eat or whatever. And this is where the sweet peas are going. Uh, I'd be glad it's in here last year, which we're going again this year, except just that end. I'm having three sweet peas there, three there, and three there. And I'll be going climbing up that netting. And then I put some netting in there. That's just a bit of string, but I've got to replace that. Another trial again. So that and there, all I've done, the cane, I'm a bit blurry, but I've just scored it in a file. Meaning when I put my uh, wire around, it doesn't slip down, it stays on there when I pull that tight. And the wire itself, I wall up that the same colour as the fence and all. <coughs> right, he's still in the greenhouse. I bought him out some food. We feed brown turkey. I'm still persuading him to go that way, to get him away from that one. Like any fruit tree, you can uh, persuade him where, where he wanted to go. Right, the ones who saw this uh, Ajax Gladys. When these come in the post, I had some babies with them as well. So I put them in the, a pot, as you can see they've come through. So I'm going to bung them outside. Which I've done there in my raised bed. Just find a little gap. Bung them in. Put my label in. 
Also, one of my fruit trees, uh, I've got spare can of seeds, and I'm just going to bury a couple in here if they don't do anything, because they have spares anyway. If they don't do anything, then I ain't lost nothing. They have a good way to look after them. Rushing, Papa Pulteney loves his son. Well, the sweet peas go in. I'm going up the top left hand side of the garden. They're also going underneath to hang on to this lot. So, these have some more spares going in. But there was sweet peas in here last year. They've come through already. As we can see, there's one, there's one. And then, 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 there's a few in there. Some of them on the leaves going up. And I think with last year's lot, they're going straight in the middle, growing up the middle. So this year, I'm putting them on the front. So I can grab all of them when they're this height and pull them forward. And I'm going to help them out and put a bit of a mic under the arras. But the chaps are ready to go out. These are uh, old fashioned. Because we've got a class for scented old fashioned and normal sweet peas. That five classes now in the, in the show. So, a bit of mic under them all. Firm them in. Give them a good way through. There's more sweet peas going in that end lot. That first bed there. These beds are wide because I've got a, a bigger gap to walk down there. But it narrows when we get this in. That's why you ain't got some wide base bedding. And about half three on the afternoon, this gets the sun for uh, three and a half hours. Perfect. So let's clear the bed. We'll see what it is. <coughs> Take all the rabbit muck off the straw. And use that again once these are planted, which I've done there. The netting, which I use down the side, that's going on here as well, in between these two canes. You can just make him out there. He's nice and tight. The back to front down there, he's folding. So there they're in. The straw is returned back on top. He's had a bit of micro room as well to get that lift. So good way to him. Perfect for the job out the road. Because we have cats, squirrels and they had a fox for a while. But just in case I'll put a bit of a wire mesh over the front of them. Just to help them a bit. I don't know how rushing they can then go on them. White bells, blue bells. These are just about finishing off now. Obviously I can't get no bedding out until these lot have died down. I'll just pull the tops off. I don't know where my gaps are. Right, can I? This is my Durban. There's a few of these. Let's have a look at the chap here. Yeah, he's got roots in. Bung him back in the pot. Just checking he's uh, ticking over. Be a motion again. The blossom on these trees is perfect. Just going to a wedding or something. I'd, I'd click that one and use that as confetti. You've got the scent and all. Put your ruch and leg it down here. Leg it over the brook up there. Call it back. I don't know where we got over. I don't know where go over there. Jesus H. Grandkids. Another one from Seed. Uh, these pots are perfect. I used to have them for me uh, leeks. Transplanted me leeks and me onions from drinking cups. Next pot size up. Perfect. These are one pint. Uh, size from Wilco. They're perfect for these as well. Right, my compost mix with a clover and a bit of vermiculite. 
next stage of just further in. Perfect, if I'm ready, then I get potted on. As you can see, I've, these lot I've used my own compost because the tomato seeds are germinating through. If I run out of cider, I'll get the bad game run out. Boston, a bit of cold covered by ice cubes. One of them lasts me all night. All night, only an hour. Another input from her BQ. Good old Paul Davis, he's a good lad. Um, Ragos, Trevor Dan, Cradle Town. We are going to bring him by there. He asked Paul if he can ask you gather for a few for this, this place. Paul give me a shout and borrow these off him. Good lad. Next time I see you, Paul, you can have your uh, Cape Gooseberry. I'll put him on again. He's really like, like the clappers now. Nice one. But uh, these are still left out. I can't water these tonight. My gladdies, my cormlets, uh, them two have just started coming through now. So this is a uh, six days old or something, this floaty. But at least I'm coming through. Uh, the cock up a med with these. I use the new pen. And this bloody, with the sun all the rain, just washed them off. It was crap. So I didn't wash what. I bothered him with. Right, fruit trees. This is the top of the garden between the beds. That leaf is curled in. So it's opening up. Have a look. Yeah. One of these. Little chap in a I just took the leaf off. It's easier. No, just keep her eye on the chaps. Cape Gooseberry. That was from last year. I've left him in because um, I wanted to see if he'd survive. Well, no, not the minus seven is what we've had. But I've got all the weeds out. Had a close look at this chap. And uh, there ain't no green in there. No what? So it will, so will come out eventually. I took all the outside growth off. In fact, my cake was will probably go out next week. Because I've been giving an extra top dressing with some more muck. Look after the chap. Still doing the uh, banana skins in the uh, rainwater, leaving them overnight. But uh, I did this again this morning from yesterday. Tunnel, I'm eventually clearing this out. The canes and gold, which is down here. Uh, bags of stuff. What we're doing now is watering this lot, as you can see there. There's a good brew. I'm just watering all the tubs and the fruit trees that have been there. And these lot, I'm out of the road now, I took them to Dave's. So he's going to get a good watering. And me too. You can just see, I've done that one that's wet there. And me on the great vine, which is behind you. Just look after this chaps. Everything now is starting into growth. If you haven't given it a tea already, then clean it, help them out. In fact, uh, I've done it today, all my borders of the sides and uh, everything else in the top for the tunnel. I've uh, grown more of them. But yeah, I've usually done it before now. For, uh, for all that now. So I've done that this afternoon. All right, blackberries. All I want is one shoot on there, new shoot, to go up there for this year, for next year's fruit. So I'm cutting all the ex extra excess off, so I don't need it. So there's my fruit for this year. That's going up, and that's my new one for next year. It'll go up the side of there, hopefully. And there's my new one. Right, the same big black over Bill's mother's. Somebody's put it on the um, colleague egg group. It comes from uh, William Shakespeare, obviously William Bill. 
I was looking over to his place. I said, oh, they black over Bill's mothers. That's where he comes from anyway. Five roses I had scented. That's why I had them. You know that very well. But he's got a little shoot on the on the wires. Then I had a phone call. And he's just spurred in there. He's doing well. Got white roots. That that was the ones that looked duff. But uh, I'll give him another week or so. If you don't get a spirit on, then I'll sort of bring you, well, email them, because I've sent them the photo, it's proof. Well, I managed to talk to the missus. <coughs> no yards will get to my missus. If I can, because all these obviously have the garage, all my corns. If I can keep them in the living room, sort them out there, or outside my patio, instead of keep pouring them out in the garage. And it says yes. So the lot come out, and that's where they're in, in the living room. I don't think I'll get away with it. Must need a good books. Right, we're next to Ashwoods. So I've got a, a voucher, 30 quid voucher from the show last year. Basically, we've got some new pots. The two for the pots for the bathroom. So he bummed him in it. Uh, he's going to be replaced. So that one's perfect on that corner. But now I'm going to get a little stand just to elevate him a bit. Because he looks nice any road. So that one goes with that. And now he had them two left. So I'm going to try and get another pot for him. Similar to that. We'll get there. Right, one of my wallflowers. We had a, a talk from uh, Danny Wells last year. He brings loads of stuff with him, professional grower, loads of plants. And he was flogging these last year. And uh, I had these because they were scented as well. But uh, I'm going strong. There's only one that I've lost uh, during the winter. So he is going in there. In fact, uh, our next meeting next month. Is uh, Danny Wells again? He's got four different talks for the, the seasons, so he's bringing in a lot of plants with him again. So he's a good speaker, went down, went down well with our lot. So, clearance of my price will do. So, that chap's going in for a variegated leaf, poor new one like him. And he was right, good lad. You give it a nice way through. And these lot on the morning, it was a nice day. I'll take the greenhouses off. Because I want air movement around them. Obviously, move them about, make them nice and sturdy. I don't want to molly, coddle them, and spoil them. I've only got it because it gets cold at night. It's just to look after them. In fact, these have got to be earthed up again. Uh, we had some rain two months ago and these have dropped down again because these were level but uh, that'll be good because then I can earth them up as well these are the last of the tulips these for uh, Boston colours last two trays there of sweet peas and the latons. Put him back on, he hasn't got much root around him. So I'll just have a look at the cave gooseberry. Yeah, he needs potting on. So this was last week. These are uh, long pots I used to use for my onions. You can get a, a good root on them. Perfect for these. Oh, we've got an um, intermission, a quick advert. Rowley, are you ready, sir? Yeah, I mean, I've unmuted, yeah. Yeah, yeah. ready as I'll ever be. Good man, good man, all yours. Right, this is um, the, well, the Pongo beans in actual fact. Uh, I had to put this picture on once before, but because I've got a second one, I'll show the first one again. Uh, 
they um I should, I should have wrote it down they're a lima bean anyway and i grew some last year and they was brilliant beans um plus they was very early so i thought well if it worked last year i'll have another go for this year so if you move on to the next one please sir and that's what they are or were 20th when was that yesterday because i put this together yesterday for me so um most of the pictures are the updated pictures are yesterday's pictures so they're going on well i'm just going to put a little bit of string around at the time to the canes just to support them a bit but as you can see they're in flower so hopefully another couple of weeks um i should be picking beans off them yeah. and they're very very prolific um in actual fact tony king gave me them the seeds we were, i don't know what you're doing i swapped him for some stennas that i've got um and i've been well ble well pleased with them so that's that um where should we go now if we move on to the next one Th this um i've done which i've never done before anyway it's grew tried to grow some very early um potatoes so what i've done i got some swifts uh put them in a greenhouse in my magic compost mixes um and where are we that's well, seven or one on these da, 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 da. um Definitely that's there. Pictures beat. Oh, well, sorry, I forgot to say about the other one. The last bit on the other one, go, going backwards, the, the, the beans, they are in half of 45 gallon barrels, as you can see, um, and they're on a rain gut, a wicking system. Should have said. Uh, sorry about that. But anyhow, that, that's what they were. Now, moving on to the beans, onto the potatoes. They're swift potatoes. Three, uh, I only just got one of the trial things from the uh, Garden Club, the um, Planet Gardeners Association, which I just help out there every now and again. Um, so that's the first picture what they look like there. If we move on to the next one, you can see that's 1,492 grams on there. The three bags have actually averaged uh, roughly one and a half kilos between them so uh been very pleased with them it worked so next year i'll do more the, these are set in actual fact in the uh, 30 litre cloth bags that the um marijuana growers throw away with all their coir and everything on them um and i've just been to be honest i've over watered them um my fault learning how to do it uh the bag I started off with a shovel full of alpaca shit in the bottom, then my homemade compost, and then the alpaca muck on the top of it, and watered them. Um, and as you can see, uh, I harvested them. The first bag at 80 days, the second bag at 87, and the last bag at 94 days. As I said earlier, an average of one and a half kilos per bag. So for a trial, well pleased with it. I'll certainly definitely do it again next year. But I think I'll put less muck in the bottom because I think it laid a bit too wet and that's what might have given me a couple of rotten potatoes. But uh, you live and learn, don't you? It was a trial and well yeah. pleased. <laughs> this is um, Joe Mickell at Grow Stump Carrots. <laughs> we got four oh, bags. Thank you, sir. <laughs> four bags of stump carrots. Um, the picture have been on before this. Like I say, everything I'm doing today is an update on what I've done. There's four four bays, two dozen in each bay, um, four different composts. The first bottom right hand corner is, is uh, actual fact number one is um, not yet low it in actual fact. The bottom right hand corner. I was looking, was that your mouse or mine? Your mouse is on the top right hand. Um, the first one I use oh, is okay. standard stand there. Yeah, that's the one. That that mix in there is the standard mix that um, Marcus Powell was used. Uh, I made his, well, he's not done any for two years now. Uh, he's having a bit of a sabbatical to get his landscaping business up and running. But um, I made his compost up for him for two years before he packed up. Uh, so I know exactly what's in there. And that's my standard. Um, and then the other three are different mixes. The, the one to the left of that 
in actual fact, is, again, my homemade compost, worm casts, silver sand. You must always put 10% silver sand, or we've always discovered. We tried it at various rates, and the, the um, composts, like I say, we've always done better with 10% of silver sand. I always use kiddies play sand because some of the paving uh, silver sand that you get, if you go and buy the expensive stuff, it's got weed killer in it. So you should always buy cheap silver sand if you're going to, because obviously you're not going to buy the weed killer at the same time. Um, and that number two has, has also got 10 litres uh, of my far, very mm. fine ground up raw char powder. Well, I called it powder because I haven't put anything in it. Um, just to starve some of the um, goodness out of it. And all of them have had, when I mix them, a handful of super phosphate um, and some calcified seaweed powder, uh, as the professionals use. So, um, what should we do? Da, 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 da. Sweet candle carrots. I said all about that. We move on to the next one. Then you can you can see that that's how they're growing. They're almost at the point of where well, they are at the point. Those ones, the first two, the, the first and second bed are ready for thinning. Um, and all I should do is snip them out with the scissors. You know, you don't pull them, otherwise you deserve the roots. Because if Mick can get straight roots out of transplanted carrots, he'll be a miracle man, I think. Um, the other two top ones, I mean, the next picture I think is the same, Mick, isn't it? Yeah, it's just yeah. the other bit. You can see how well they're growing. Um, there again, they was a little bit late. I think I was about nine days late because we work on about 140 days between shows um, for the stumps down this end of the land. Um, but like I say, that's the second bed. They're ready for um, thinning out as far as it goes. I've had a few where I put the same as you did, Mick, three seeds in each one. There's a few of them I've never got anything. So I've, as I've gone round and checking them, I've had sort of re-sown them so there'll be some late they'll just be small but rather than have nothing I'll soon have some small ones because you can always eat carrots can't you yeah yeah you know and the next lot please what we got there the, this is I grew um Akron F1 tomatoes last year was very very pleased with them so obviously I've done them again this year this is in one of the smaller 8 6 greenhouses uh, again, all homemade composts um, with some of my biochar in it and everything like that. And they are on um, an automatic watering system. Just outside, there's a 45-gallon uh, barrel or a tub anyway of um, water with a timer on the next picture. That's, that's the timer. That... Um, Greenhouse experience, in actual fact, are selling them cheaper than most other places. Last year, I was paying, I paid twenty pounds for one. This year, twenty pounds in there. So um, they're, they're doing a good, a good deal. It's a, it's a good little shop, in actual fact. No, I don't know if you you ever go down that way, you know. And there's a good burger van just outside of it as well. <laughs> there's a guy uh, I'm visiting uh, Newport Pagnell who does my yeah, well, he was not far from it. Computer repairs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was only on the other side of the M1 to it, really. Yeah. You know, New, Newport Pagnell is really Junction 14, and that shop is near nearer to Junction 13. Right. You know, so you, you from Newport Pagnell, you, you, you was probably about four miles away from his shop, you know. Uh, but that's, that's, like I say, it's basically homemade watering system. Obviously, there's filters either side of that. Um, I fed them last year um, to start with when the uh, tomatoes were smaller on uh, all I'd done was just kept tipping three or four litres of uh, stinging nettle juice into the barrel and uh, the barrel always has got um, with a solar panel up on the greenhouse roof a little air bubbler so it's you know just keep it stirred up they was fed to start with with stinging nettle tea um, and when they, as soon as they started fruiting, I moved them over to comfrey tea. So realistically, it was cheap as cheap, and it worked like a good and like you know. So um, 
what do you do? It worked last year, so I just tidied it up again and have another crack at it this year. Use it using them drippers, Roland. Do you no, ever get and the drippers or misters are you using? No, all all there is, in actual fact, to, going on from that picture, I just changed it a little bit. All there is is a thirteen mil pipe runs around the greenhouse, okay. of which I've tapped into it with the um well, they about five mil pipes, didn't they? Yeah. Right. And it's got no end on it at all. It just pours oh, straight in. But what it what it was doing, you, you, you could probably see, yeah, you can see where they run in. Um, because last year there was all different lengths and bits and pieces of pipe. So this year I tidied it all up. You see, I've cable tied a batten on the side of the greenhouse to open the pipe up and keep it right. The, the one thing in there that is wrong, to be honest, is that black pipe should be white pipe to start with. It should be the ice white pipe so that um, it, it doesn't alter the uh, feeds and things and doesn't um, it doesn't absorb the heat like black pipe does, does it? Yeah. Are you with me? And all them little pipes over there, just that they're all a foot long, right? I measured them all and cut them all at once, just dropped them in there. But what it kept doing, what it was doing was like almost drilling a hole into the tops of the compost, right? Mm -hmm. So all I've done is I've slipped a flower pot underneath each one now, so it runs into there first and then drips out of the four or five holes of the um, little flower pot. But, but I but, did some, I did something like that with spare the black pipe. Yeah. On the end of the pipe, I pushed a roll plug on, you know, then plastic. Yes, 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 yes. And that, yeah. that causes it to sprinkle. Well, that's a, that's a good idea. They do do, you, you could get other things, don't you, that are like timers, you get red ones and blue ones. That yeah. you plug with it. But I couldn't really see the point. They kept they kept blocking where this doesn't block. I can, when you go in, the, 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 the actual feed goes into the bottom right-hand corner and the bottom left-hand corner, I've got a plug on the end of the pipe, so I can pull the plug out and flush the system. Yeah. But... It's all filtered into the barrel and out of the barrel anyway, so I don't really... I, I did suffer when I had them drip things on the end, but since taking them off, I didn't. But like I say, to distribute it, it, it was working better so far with just a flower pot underneath each one, you know. Um, but I, I can't make my mind up what I'm going to mulch the tops of the pots with. I don't know whether to cover them in alpaca muck, which I'm very tempted to do, um, or just cut a sheet of cardboard and put over it or something like that. But, um... A bed straw. Use... Sorry? A bed straw. Yeah, I don't use straw really anywhere. I don't use straw or hay because of the amount of seeds. And, um... Whilst I can get it, there's only really the hay that I can get, that I can guarantee that has not been sprayed with the wrong sort of um, weed killers. So, and I know where the hay comes from that the alpacas are fed on. Yeah. And that I know uh, Richard doesn't spray the nasties anyway because he um, has the hay and the straw uh, for his horses and to resell it. And, and he knows all about it, so he wouldn't do it anyway. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I think if you put some alpaca stuff on there, then, in actual fact, talking about that, when I was doing a lot of reading about it, somebody said that because of the, the, the way that the uh, alpacas regurgitate and chew their cud and all sorts, you don't get wheel, um, weed seeds. Well, weed. First, first and foremost, he's a lime bugger, because you do. <laughs> I've got some, uh, well, you know, grass seeds growing from it. So um, that's a bit of a lie. Uh, but I don't know. I might even just cover them in, in lawnmower cuttings or something like that. You know, that would probably... So I can get that easy with no problem, you know. Yeah, but some, uh, be like, can you get anything like seaweed or sheep wool or something like that? No, I, I've probably still got some sheep wool left in actual... I can get some wool, but you see, there again, that's high nitrogen. Yeah. If I if I put sheep wool on there, you know, I, I can yeah. get that. That's no problem at all. Um I think I've still got some old stuff laying about, but I'm sure just to get a couple of bagfuls like that, I can get some from the lady that we let put the sheep on our fields now. So, you know, 
I've got, I've got two old to do the shearing, so it's easier to let her put a sheep on there and just have a couple of lambs for the freezer at the end of the time. Yeah. I don't know. Anyhow, if I, but you can, like I say, you can see what I've done there and, and with the timer. Um, like I say, the seeds for them, uh, Akron, I actually set them on the 12th of the 3rd and put them out into the greenhouse on the 15th of the 5th. Um, and then, like I say, you see them, they was, that's how they were on the 20th. Uh, the next one then, Mick, and this is me playing about job. I play about with everything. Basically, I'm having a go see how big a potato I can grow. I don't think I'll ever get in the Peter Glazebrook idea, but it's only um, about nine pounds something, the world record, right? But, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained. What they are, they're condor potatoes, which is the same as what he had, come from Jameson's up in Annan. Uh, and what I've done, these have been grown from chits. So there's only one chit was done um, from, well, there was four different potatoes that I took the chips from. They weren't all of the same potato. Um, I took the chips on the first of the third, uh, and much to a couple of people's surprise, what I'd done, um, and whether people think I was right or wrong, I'd done it for the hell of it anyway, I actually covered them in honey to protect the open cup um, before I set them. So, you know, some say you cut them and let them dry out before you uh, set them and, and plant them on. Um, but I've seen this thing about honey a few times and I thought, well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Here we go. Cover them in honey. And so I cut them while they were still wet. I covered them all in honey and set them. And <laughs> they've grown anyway, so proved that honey don't kill them um like i say i took the chips on the first of the third i potted them up um into those pots on the second of the fourth um obviously they, they've got some uh mycorrhizal underneath them uh and what i've done the three of them are still in the pots like that still in the same greenhouse but the one in the left hand corner uh, being the smallest one, I was frightened of killing them because what I'd then, then done, I took that small one, tipped it out of the pot. Um, I think the next picture probably shows that, Nick, doesn't it? Yeah, so I tipped it out and there was two potatoes in there. Obviously, taking it from a chip, you only expect or you only want one, don't you, to try and make it grow. And what there was was one, as you can see, the top one, That that's like uh, obviously um and what's it picture and the small the small one is about the size of a bantam's egg and the big one at the top would just about fit in the ordinary standard coffee mug um and what i was frightened of doing was disturbing the roots too much and actually killing the plant um so if we move on to the next one which is probably my last one um on the 18th of the 5th, I done that stripping them out. And of course, that picture is the 20th of the 5th. Um, and it's still alive and it's still alive this morning. So I haven't killed it. So because, you know, I was prepared to sacrifice that plant in the stripping out to see. Um, so what I should do during this week, I'll strip out the other three. Um, and like that, move it up into a bigger pot. That's into, I don't know, about a 50 litre pot now. Um, and the other pots, the other three will be in about 80 or 90 litre pots. And again, what I've done there is alpaca poo in the bottom, all my homemade compost um, with some fish blood and bone uh, and some Q4, um, stirred it up and in my homemade compost and stuff, which it, the homemade compost has worm casts. Um, what have I got? Homemade, my homemade compost. Then to that's added worm casts, 20 litres of coir, 20 litres of recycled peat compost, alpaca poo top and bottom, two handfuls of fish blood and bone, and stirred up. Um, and in there, and as you can see, it's got alpaca poo on the top of it. 
uh, and it's outside and it's lived for twenty first. So uh, it's lived for three days. So hopefully it don't die, and the other three will get done during the week, um, and just see how it goes, you know. But it's interesting, um, considering it's only just grown from a chick, you know. Brilliant. Uh, and I think you'll find that's just about the end of my input for the day or the week. Austin, cheers, Rowley. Rowley, just a quickie on the yeah. the original felt pots that you mentioned about from the weed growers. I've got some and the dry out rapid. Yeah, you've so got, what, yeah. So what I've done with mine, I've got a big, like a beer tray, which is about an inch, inch and a half. Yeah. And I put it in there and I just soak the tray and, and the capillary takes it up the felt and water yeah. the tray is perfect, it does. Yeah, well, the, 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 um, the three bags that I had in the greenhouse with the Swiss in, what I'd got there, I've, I've got um, a bit more than seed tray. The, that um, propagator that Mix uses, I've got some seed trays that are about the same size as his propagator tray. Yeah. And they're just right for the bag to sit into them. And they was in the other side of the greenhouse to where the beans are. Yeah. Right. And now, because I haven't as such grown anything in that side. Well, I did because I used to grow my leeks um, in in there. Uh, but I've not done, well, say leeks for two years because Marcus always used to give me uh, me leeks. But now he don't do it. So I don't, I don't grow them. But... Um, what I've then done is them bags with all the mixture in, I've upturned them into the three half barrels oh, to right, sort right, the right. potatoes out. And that's what I'm going to grow something in this year. Yeah, what, yeah. I'd, what I would like to grow in there, uh, and I've set the plants uh, as some melon plants. But oh, I've, got, right. I've got four melon plants that I, I've grown, but they, they're like bloody dwarfs. They, they they just don't seem to be growing. They, they, they're just, they're nice, healthy looking, small plants. Well, small ain't the word for it. I would have said tiny plants, but they just don't seem to be making any size. And, and <laughs> like other things that I've got in there, there's some butternut squash, there's cucumbers, um, well, I don't know what there is. Two or three different types of cucumbers in there. Um, and I don't know, something else. I've all grown, but these um, melons, they've just frozen. I, I've, got, <laughs> I've got some about a, probably two inches of them called the uh, Minnesota Midget. Yeah. And uh, I'm just seeing how they'll do. But the cucumbers have got fruit on some of them and still in five inch pots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, well, like I said, I haven't pushed them because de down here, um, much as the, the, the farm is in a little bit of a frost hollow, and we have had uh, frosts the first Sunday in June. So I never bother really to do a great deal, although in saying that, I took a flyer today and I've put a row of what they called fire storm and a, and a row of um, moonlight. The, the new runner bean that's supposed to be self-pollinating, I put two rows of them out that are nice plants. So I, I have um, put a wrap around there to try and keep the bloody pigeons off as much as anything else, of debris netting, just to sort of protect them from the sunlight and the wind. Um, yeah. And if it frost kills them, it kills them. You know, it is, pays your money, take your choice, don't you? Mm. But, uh, you know, you, you have a go, and uh, that's what I say. That's but they, they, these melons, I just can't understand the natural part. And I, I was just looking at my list here, trying to find out what I'd done with them. And for some reason or other, I never put them on my list when I was planting them. But like they went in, I think, the same time as some courgettes and stuff. So they, they've been in a fair while. They, they've been in six weeks, I would have said. Strawberries, lunch, and yeah, for, for whatever the reason, I don't know how I've managed to miss them. I'll have to get the um, label, because I always write the date on the back of the labels as well. Um, but I don't know why they're not growing. You know, no, they're not growing. They was trans transfer, you know, repotted and everything, but they just, 
I mean, well, I think that the cold evenings have certainly restricted things. I know I'm not as far forward this year as I have been other years, but in saying that, I haven't turned a light on this year. You know, any of the, you know, I've got eight bank T5s and stuff like that, you know, and uh, not turned any of them on this year. But anyhow, let somebody else have a go. I've done my bit if everybody's happy and any more questions, you know. <laughs> Lovely. Cheers, Rowley. Thank you. Cheers, Good to see you uh, trial and error in. Well, you got you got to do it, you know, because there's, yeah. there's this old fellow that's always the top picture, you know, on the side here, and he does enough of it, so the rest of us have got to give it crack as well. Yeah. Boston. Yeah. Cheers, Dad. Cheers, Rolly. Right, back to me potting on. So I've got a bit of clover, leaf mould, and my compost. Mixing all that up. These are for me, Cape Gooseberries, don't forget. So I've got a nice, longer, uh, uh, deeper pots for these two to give in. So they're going to have a good brew on them. All I'm doing is putting this much in. So I know I've got enough compost once them two are in there as well. No bit of paper on the bottom, because these have got a large holes in as well, no the crap coming out the bottom. And then the uh, hamster muck, perfect. Get a bit of brew on the bottom. Pull me pot in, and a good brew underneath so it brings up level with a new pot is going into. Put him back inside the, the bowl, fill him up from there. No, 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 I don't get no crap over here. But if it, if it goes over, it goes back into the bowl. Perfect. Bit of Mike on Rosaris. Just in case Paul ain't got none. If you ain't got none, Paul, I'll get a bag. But uh, yeah, he's ready to go before them roots start curling around the bottom. That's where they put them on. You water them two days before, then they'll collapse when you get them out. Keep him nice and upright. Then I'm going to firm him in around the outside, not on the plant itself. Them two are done outside. Not cold water, green house. There's another chap off up end, just like a canna. Look at that for the root, Boston. I feel roots coming off as well. Uh, Canova orange. These have got Boston leaves on as well. Love them. When he flowers, that's a bonus. So these pots, I think these are six quid each from the uh, Asda. Um, the bloody solid though. Perfect for this, meaning when they are fall, the wind ain't going to blow them over. I'm in the open. Okay, I've got to get some more of these pots Come on. before they uh, disappear because any um, relative who has a birthday, I think I've got rid of four so far. I've had, had a canner in one of these pots for a birthday present. There's a few more I've got to dish out, so I've got to get a few more pots. So that's what I'm using. Just going to get some of my compost out. Blossom on the fruit trees. Uh, first year with these fruit trees down the side here. So that's worked. There's a little chap doing his uh, business. Good lad. Right, my compost normal thing. Get the worms out, put it back in the bin. Level it, put it in. Exactly the same again, Amsterdam. If I still got alpaca book, in fact, I've got, I've got a goo alpaca in, get some more in there, book. So that goes in the bottom first. Uh, the two ready there, so we do them two as well. Exactly the same. Uh, gum for underneath, so it brings the, the pot level with that one. Beautiful. And these, of course, here, but over here, the ones from seed, these are the ones I sent for. New ones, see how they do as well. So there's the first one put in, 
I'm going to do is firm around the outside again. That's two done. Bung them outside again with good soaking. And just let them drain off before I bring them back in. Right, grapes, I'm now checking these every four days. Because now they've started putting a spurt on you. I'm just making them out there. He's come away from the wall already. So uh, we've got to tie him down. Plus, all my little feelers will be cut off. So there he's tied down. And I'm just pinching them out. And in, any new growth from anywhere, then I'll pinch that out as well. Because I don't need it. And this is the other side. Where the end was crap, if I remember, I jobbed him off about a month ago. And I had two shoots. And I left them both on to see which had, had been the strongest out of the both. Which ended up that one. So the other one I cut off. Now I can persuade him to come down here. The best time to persuade him is the noon when it's at the hottest. My dog's an Englishman. I think that, and then that's when I put him over. So they just bung him over a bit. And then a couple of days later, I'll pull him a bit closer. Or that one, tie him up a bit. I don't want him snapping all together, just persuading him bit by bit. That was a other side. So you don't get your bunch of grapes. You might not get them. Some of you get them on the first and second, but that's the third one. But once it gets a bit bigger, obviously the weight of the grapes pull him down anyway. So there's my first vine. So I've got grapes on him. Uh, that one will come out soon. Grapes on him, as you can see. But any new growth off these as well, they will come out. And off the side. I took these out once. But obviously, he's got to survive as much as he can. And then I've started again. So I'll take them off as well. And the other side. Sweet peas doing well in that trough. I'll just pull them away slightly. So these have got a more room to climb up. Right, I'll never stake my, my trees, but in, in this instance I've got it because he's uh, got a bit top heavy. I've got um, hooks in here, I was going to tie them to a hook, and I thought I might as well stake the chap. Well, there's a I've got away with. Uh, Delphinium, he was tied with today, but these should be in flower next week. But I'm still feeding the lot. Right, there's one grape, there's Tugger and the Delphine as well. Just help the chaps out. Right, weeding my top bread. Top bread where my fruit trees are. Also, I used to have these whips. You can see the whips starting from the bottom. On the, or, or my fruit trees down the plot. I'll just take them off as well. As I've done there, clean cut the secateurs. And then get the rest of the weeds up. Uh, them two was on the bottom here, so I took them off. That one I'll leave on. This is a cherry. Uh, if he's a bit low, I'll take him off later on. Two trees behind there, still feeding. Uh, still taking these off. Uh, that's where my carrot tubs are here. I noticed this. I thought it was just a weed. I pulled him out and it was a little tater. So I thought, well, in fact, there's another one there. He's telling me, pop me up, please. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. If I lose him, I lose him. If I don't, I don't. Right, wind's blowing him over. Because it's, it's only a, a light pot anyway. Props. Well, looking at that, the size of him, I should say he's going to be popped down, so I'm going to put him on. In any case, it's compost I went from last year, so it always comes in. And going back in the greenhouse, it's all this little chap. 
Uh, obviously, he's got caught in the web of wasp. This spider legged it out quick as lightning. And managed to get a, a couple which was in focus. And look at him, he's an evil bugger in here. Look at him. Good, Penny. Good job on the money, little chaps. But uh, within seconds, he'd, he'd uh, numb this chap, he'd knock him straight out, whatever he'd done to him. It's another one I managed to get in focus. When I looked uh, a couple of things later, but he both disappeared. Right, well, getting one of him in pots out again, or we'll doing any scrubbing him. Get him nice and clean without waiter. Scrub all the crap off. Bit of good drainage on the bottom. Good chip. Leaf mould as well. That'll, uh, it's good for any case, just compost. Mix all that rump up. Perfect. For being a, a next pot size up. And he, yes, he does be potting on. No bit of a hamster muck in the bottom. Nice brick over the hole. And it start filling up. It's just a bit wide, but I've, I've got my eye to anyway. Because he was lower in there, so that'd be perfect. Just fill up until I can get him in. And I'm looking at him on this way, obviously, and sideways to make sure he is nice and upright. Then I just pack him with my normal compost, fill him in, put him on a, a flat slab, and give him a good watering, let him dry it off. Then weeds I took out the top, uh, first time I've ever put weeds in a compost. I've never done that before on the, the allotment, weeds from the allotment, because when I used to be a, a leak man, pot leak and blanch leaks exhibition, the uh, worst things for a, a leak man, getting rust on your leaks, and there, there's quite a bit of rust on the allotment, and it used to be on grass as well, the spores of rust are on the grass, that's why I never used to put in, uh, weeds in. But I know my weeds from my back garden now are cleanish. Well, I'll chop everything up anyway, as you can see. And there's my porridge. I'll try that feed next week. Right, my gladys. Uh, I bought them outside, obviously. No wind, no rain forecast, so I know I can get away with it. So th this is my trays out there as all. Well stacked well, there might only be one brew in there there's a bit of paper and there's two brews in but uh, eight sewings what I've got to do and it's time between 90 days and uh, 110 days that's to our show now and the uh, sewings is approximately every three days the prims I'll, I'll, I'll do later on so I'm going to get them all out first so there's two, four, six, eight. So either that end or this end, that'll be the first sewing, second sewing, third, fourth one. That's my plan in the road. So them lot are the same variety. So I've got four, 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 all the way down. Or if I've only got a. 16, then it'll be two, two, two a tray. But that's what I'm going through all on. Uh, there's hordes on them on here. So there's two, four, six, eight. So I'll get five in each, each uh, tray. Some of these old ones from last year, there's a, uh, as you can see, them I've still got to get the skins off them just to check that they are all right. Uh, that one? Prince of Orange, J Parks, and with the nice and they bung them out as well. I mean, there's some naff in here, but, but um, there's some nice ones. I'm reluctant to throw stuff away, are you? Like him straight away until he's tough and he's moving the bin and him. Perfection, love them. I'm going to try and get some more of these next year. 
So that one there, I'm just going to check. And he's daff underneath as well. That's why you got to take the skins off and have a look. Right, get in there slowly. That's me spares, a couple of little spares and me prims. So the old boxes can go back in there and that's me sorted. So there's me eight different sewings. And I've marked these down as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I've stacked them so I know which is my first one to give me. There's my uh, prims, then we'll go uh, out of the way somewhere. This is a photo with Rusha, and that is the, the wild garlic. There's tons on it. That's going spare. The tulips again. That chap in eight there ain't flowered for two years. I threatened him last year, so he's going. Another nose in the um, greenhouse. And I keep on with my sweet peas as well. It's nearly, well, he's on the net in there. And we have a look down here. These chaps are coming through, which is the Aquilegia and the yellow poppies. Boston yellow, that is. Love them. I thought that was more bland than that, but they look good. You'll forget now, yeah. Right, nice strong cane for me, a uh, fruit tree that needs helping out. Before we uh, lost our supplier, I was stuck, uh, stocked up on the old thick canes. So, bloody canes are getting out of crap. So, okay, cane wise for a bit. I bugged him in about a foot and a half. Obviously, straight. So, now I'm training him straight as well. I give him a couple of days, then I'll tie him at the top as well. That's better. Since then, I'll put these on the front. I'll get away with it. And just going back on him, I thought about this last week. I'm going to help him out by elevating him. Get another good strong pot, turn him upside down, and put that on top of him. So that lifts him as well. And I'll do it with the other plant that side. Just help him out a bit, give him a bit more uh, light. This is a Hoya from Sue. Uh, we could um, bring him by. Lucifer, he's putting a bit of meat on now. And the leaves are started turning how they should do. Yeah. Planting me Gladys out. This is the raised bed back of the greenhouse. I was going to put three rows in. That's a foot apart. But I ain't got enough room. I need more room, so I'm now changed to nine inches apart. And there's that's the bed I'm going to use. So I'm taking the took all the pegs out there, took the cover off the weeds are present. A couple of weeds in, take them out. Give me hand fork. Uh, Be glad bled the uh, well all the beds last autumn had a uh, old maid garden compost and leaf mold. Just a uh, just full of bone meal. So I'm getting me spare labels out. Now I'm gonna re mark up so I'll get four rows in instead of three. Instead of a foot apart and nine inches. Got no choice. I wanted a game of wood, but I want me glad is it. So in first, you can make out the four rows there. That's where I'm doing. And I can still reach them at the back. So them lot are ready. Cover goes back on. Right, blackberry. Exactly the same as the grapes. You go so far, and then the end will just die off. So I'm going to job in. 
So my last shoot is there. We'll be able to see where it's green and it starts going down. So chop in there, which we have done. <coughs> All the grub going to this one. So the old leaves as well from last year. I'm going to take them off. And them not at the back. I'm going to persuade to come around to the front. Just helping them all out. Looks better already. Right, this was um, up Ashwoods. Come back with him. What is it? We said them. And them. I got me 30 quid voucher. I think this was 49 quid. So basically it cost us 15. Rhododendron plus I saw these ones in there for oh, you. Yeah. That's the same one as what Sue's given me. Look at them, perfect. I love them. Variegated leaves. The trailer and they turn out like them. Superb. And they start flogging canners. First I've seen them in the nursery. Fact. Uh, there's three nurseries now this year, flogging them. And their canners are about 7.50 each. But they just say what colour they are, not whether they're large, dwarf or whatever. Unless it is on the back of the label. It's going to have a perm, I suppose. On the front, Alstrom area, he's up there and he's coming through here as well. A proper sun trap is the rounded end room. It was a Boston thing, 49.50. I mean, I wouldn't have paid that. Right, this chap that uh, ain't doing very well, he's got to come out, but he weighs a bloody ton. The whole lift that I'm in charge, so I'm gonna bend him on the sheet, uh, blanket. In the old sheet. Take all my top dressing off, clean that. When the noon goes in, you know, just pull him out. He don't look very healthy. So they bung him in the bag. Okay, you take it out of Trevor, bung him in the bag. If you don't have nothing there. But uh, this lot I'm going to use again, obviously, uh, recycling. I'll get them all in about. Nice and clean, and the other wood blocked. So I've got another brick under him. Right, I know he was there. Uh, well, the roots are going to hold it together anyway. So I'm going to them pot because I need him as a mould. So he's going to have a, a good brew under him to lift him up for a start. So put some more. Uh, Drainage just around him to help him out a bit. Right, he's filled so he's level. Just push him down slightly because of the weight of the plant when he goes on will drop it down a bit more. So I know he's level. He's had a bit of leaf mold mixed with him as well and my compost. Normal crab worms come out. Again. Uh, <coughs> I've used quite a bit of leaf mold this month. It's a good, good brew. And there, there's the stuff that's going in. Obviously mixed with the ericaceous. Keep him nice and upright. I know he's level there. So now I'm just uh, feeling. Sure. Don't need no mic under him, he's got enough brew in here. That's uh, level enough for me. Obviously when he's training uh, next year, then he just need a quick prune just to shape the chap. Obviously when he's flowing under that, you can tell that one's the best time to prune the chap. 
的时候。Yeah. Now I'm just cleaning the outside of the pot with a paintbrush because he's no good on here, so I don't have crap going on there. So I'm just unraveling this or folding the, the sheet up. Getting these level, you've got to get them level because you've only got one hole usually in the middle of the pot with these large heavy pots meaning if he's isn't level you're going to get waterlogged at one corner meaning them roots are going to be very happy the more level you can get it the better the drainage whatever in fact i, I did them all today let's look at the bottom you can't see from this from the top so all i've got is a, a thick cane underneath on all on, I've leveled a lot up. They won't much out. Uh, that grid's going back on. Stop the squirrels burying his nuts. Let's see. Peg down because I'm SAS squirrels. Need good wagering. Could be washing out to dry. Perfect. In fact, I should have. Uh, Another photo. There's about eight of them now in blue. Blueberry, loads of fruit on there as well. And there's loads of new smells coming. Just walk up the garden now, you have a, have a whiff of something. Nice. Uh, and a few, we've only had one night of rain two or three days ago. But uh, weren't enough to job these. So I'll give these a uh, good helping out as well. Right, the only tulips that are left in are these. Uh, yellow and red ones, meaning these lot here. So I'll go back on that one. Before we get onto them, you can see mine in there. The missus come out, bloody scream, come back in. So I'm just in a bloody mouse, propped herself. We had to move the first house, we lived in the terrace house. We had to move because I in a bloody mouse in the kitchen. Can I nose in there, he can't see himself. Here he is, look at his little face. Is that a mouse all of all? I don't know. Couldn't catch the bugger. Well, this is a crap to sell. Well, I've got a trap now. That looks like a shrew, Mick. That's what I thought. Look at its snout. That, yeah, that's what I thought. Oh. But I still crapped itself anyway. I'll right, we'll tell the gaffer. That might please him. I might take the trap away. But it, 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 it catches him a liar. Then you just take him to a, a park or something. Right there. Right, Gladys, ready to go out. Right, getting that top skin off. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. I've put this down now to do them the night before. I mean, I've got more time. I'll do this while I'm watching the box. I'm gonna get this skin off because the the new shoots underneath. You want to see them. Well, that skin you can see him. Walls of skins off, you can see him. And all I want is a strong shoot near the middle, so he's going to come out. Give me potato peeler, and I'll dig it out. You've got to be cruel to be kind. Well, I've got loads of silver sands back there. There's one there, there's another one in the tunnel. This from when I had me um, propagator in the loft, with silver sand underneath that. At least four inches thick with a soil warming cable in it. Perfect. Well, oh, good for my carrots. But now it's good for it's going under my gladys. When I used to use the mick like before. So I've took one out there. I'm going to take in that as well. All I want is that one. Here's one on the side. Took that chap out. If you turn them over, you can see the roots trying to tell you to come out. 
you know, plant me up, please. I mean, even if there were no signs of any route, I, I still bunged him in. I'm just getting that helping hand. Uh, I used to keep all these Rigato Circus Club, Prince of Orange, Bangladesh, Sochi, Ajax, the Manx. I ain't gonna fight about marking them all down. I'm just gonna bug them in. So that's my first lot that's going in at my first tray. Place them down. So there's my label where he's going. <coughs> uh, five inch deep, which is the trowel, five inch deep, perfect. Put my silver sand in, bung him in, upright. Now, obviously, the ones with the biggest shoots are going in first. So you've got to be careful with your backfill, obviously. So he's been put in there, and I just put the label back behind it, and then get the next one out. So the more nice and level, which there will be. And just leg it along till I'm doing the lot. So that's one row in, gonna start on the next. Right, that's my first uh, try of gladys out. <laughs> Right, so much I read during the week, so still a learning curve. Just as a, a good pick me up now, as the season started to gain up again, and everything is uh, just that extra bit of warmth, everything is kick starting. Just to give it a, a quick nitrogen boost. If you use alfalfa pellets, which I do, it's one of the best. Um, feed you can give them straight away if you can get it in powder form because it's already there it's not painted it doesn't gonna break down so all I do is put it in a bag a strong bag in the garage I lay them out flat not in the pile turn that bag over it and then smack it with a lump hammer and that crushes everything so I've got it in powder form not pellet Perfect, meaning you can use that straight away. And the other good one, which I knew anyway, uh, but I didn't know how good it was, was I knew this is spent coffee grounds. So I've been using that as a good ingredient for the compost, but it is a, I know it was a nitrogen feed, but I didn't know how high or how good it was. But reading up of half a pellets and spent coffee grounds is an excellent king start for anything. So, fruit, um, rose bush, I thought he, need, he needs a helping hand. So, he had a bit of each in there. Just about make out both powders. You know, get him a good waiter. And that's worked. In fact, I did everything. A lot on it. I think this was a Saturday, Saturday's paper. Looking at new stuff now, was cross pollination, everything. Um, well, first one, uh, scented, uh, winter flowering evergreen. That'll do me. This is pretty, I know, seven quid post is crap, but uh. I've had a couple of them for the raised beds at all. Coronelia Plensa. Right, giving a good brew under him. Nice feed. Loads of blooms on them already. Perfect. And it's just uh, another colour. I don't know if he's on the ice, but we ain't got that colour leaf anywhere. So he's doing good. And the thing which I bought out, he is here. Boy, him out today. He's a good little chap. 
Blue Bells and White Ben White Bells just about finishing. Um equally to this side, these are starting opening up as well. You see one there. All them are opening up. <coughs> Wish be clouds. I tell you, you got good weather coming next couple of days. Still looking after these. That one we finished here tonight. These will go back on again tonight. It's going down to six again. Just look after the chaps. Right, tulips. When these finish off, like these have. Now these lot are making seed, and I thought, hmm, if they're making seed, if I chop his head off, all the nourishment ain't going into the seed then, only going into the bulb. So I'm reading up on it, and uh, as I was doing anyway, like last year, I just lifted the lot, like when they're in that stage, and then you just store them as they are, and they'll drive themselves. It's like an onion when you take him up. Let them dry up exactly the same before you top and tail them. And then when you store the onions, they will last longer. So as soon as these are finished, these tulips, all these tulips are coming out. Don't think we be glad these are going in here later on. I think there's only three left in the top raised bed as well. Most of them have uh, finished, so they'll be jobbing. And these are uh, scented rose. The blooms are moving up here now. Boston. It's a short trip. Live life and be kind. That's it, people. Austin, good to see you, sir. Paul. It's going down to clean the you again. Okay. All right, Mick. Thank you, Mick. Scott Mon. Very good. Uh, there will be a Zoom next week. All right. I've got a visit to me mate. Couldn't get there on this time. Of course, I've got my farmer's uh, compost, compost tea talk Wednesday. Okay. Me and Nigel are doing muddy boots. That'll be good. Then. 